All right. Get ready to waddle with me on this one because we are diving deep into the Penguin. Oh, this is going to be good. Yeah, HBO's new Batman spinoff. And yeah. specifically, we're dissecting episode one. Okay. After Hours. All right. And let me tell you, this review you sent over has me hooked already. Really? It throws us right into the action with Penguin, uh, making a bold power play right from the get-go. I like it. What really struck me is how this review highlights the new tone of the show. Okay. We're not in silly theatrical villain territory anymore. Yeah. This is right. this is different. Expert speaker, what's your initial reaction to Gotham's criminal underworld getting this gritty makeover? Well, it's an interesting shift, isn't it? I mean, Gotham's always been a playground for these larger-than-life villains, but mm. this time it feels different. The darkness is palpable. Mirroring that power vacuum left in the wake of all the chaos from the Riddler, mm -hmm. this new Gotham feels like a breeding ground for someone like Penguin to rise, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, and rise he does. This review does not hold back. Penguin takes out um, oh, wow. Alberto Falcone in the very first episode. No way. Talk about the statement. Yeah. But beyond the shock value, the reviewer seems blown away by Colin Farrell's performance, saying he's shedding that goofy image for good. Interesting. Do you think Penguin can really pull this off, this transformation, or are we going to see, you know, flashes of the old umbrella-wielding goofball uh, peeking through? Well, I mean, you have to think about how Penguin's been portrayed in the past. Right. Often as this comical relief, mm -hmm. a bumbling figure in a world of, like, more imposing villains. Right. This time around, the ruthlessness is immediate and yeah. impactful. Yeah. It's a calculated move to establish him as a genuine threat, someone who'll stop at nothing to claim power. And that power grab has some serious consequences oh, yeah. for the people in Gotham. For sure. The review really paints, like, a bleak picture of what's happening. Yeah. It made me wonder, is this... Yeah. Is this a Gotham in perpetual darkness? Right. Or can there ever be light in this version of the city? It's a good question. This review does mention one uh, intriguing character who kind of gets caught in Penguin's web. Okay. Victor Aguilar. Yeah, Victor. What do you make of him and his role in all of this? He's interesting, Victor. Um, it's almost like he's thrust into this underworld by accident. Mm -hmm. He's a pawn in Penguin's game. And it makes you think, how many Victor Aguilars are out there in Gotham? Right. <laughs> Just regular people trying to survive. Yeah. But they get caught in this crossfire. Total collateral damage. Exactly. In Penguin's quest for the top spot. Yeah. And speaking of collateral damage, oh. the review mentioned a scene with Penguin and his mother. Okay. It sounds like uh, she's not exactly thrilled with his career choices. I bet not. What's your take on that dynamic? Is it, um, I mean, is it, genuine affection from Penguin, or is it just another manipulation tactic for him? Well, that's always the question, isn't it? I yeah. mean, is there any part of Oswald Cobblepot that isn't touched by, you know, the grime of Gotham, right. even in his personal relationships? Yeah. It's intriguing, though, to see this glimpse of vulnerability in someone who just moments ago was orchestrating, you know, a brutal assassination. Yeah. Adds layer of complexity to his character. For sure. Makes you wonder, can someone be both a ruthless criminal mastermind right. and a devoted son? Yeah. Or is he just playing a different game with her? It's a good point. We've seen this before, yeah. haven't we? Where a show gives us these little peeks behind the villain's mask. Right. And we're left f questioning like our own perception. Absolutely. Are we willing to humanize someone like Penguin? Yeah. Just because he shows a sliver of humanity toward his mother. It's a tale as old as time, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the villain with a soft spot for their mother. Right. But but the key is, does this actually make him redeemable? Right. Or is it just another tool for him to use? I mean, the review seemed to kind of skirt around that question. Oh, yeah, they did. Left it open for us to think about. I like that. Keep us on our toes. Yeah. Just when we thought we had a handle on Penguin's game. Yeah. In walks Sophia Falcone. Here we go. The reviewer definitely sees her as a major player. Oh, yeah. In this whole power struggle. Mm hmm What do you think her angle is? I mean, is she out to avenge her brother? No, oh, I don't know. Or does she have her own ambitions for Gotham? Well, Sophia is fascinating because she represents this whole legacy of organized crime in Gotham. Yeah. Her father, Carmine Falcone, he ruled this city. He did. And now she seems poised to take that mantle back. Wow. 
But it won't be easy, you know. She and Penguin are on a collision course, yeah. two sides of the same coin. Right, right, right. Both vying for control. Oh, this is good. It's gonna be a good one. Yeah, two powerful forces about to collide. It's gonna be epic. Yeah. But here's the thing that really stuck with me. The review mentioned how visually stunning the show is, yeah. but also how dark and gritty. Mm. And I mean, we are talking about Gotham, right? so it's not exactly surprising. Yeah. But the reviewer seemed to suggest it's almost claustrophobic. Interesting. What do you make of that choice? How do you think it contributes to the overall feeling of the Penguin? You know, I think that claustrophobia you're talking about, it's intentional. Okay. It's a visual representation of Penguin's world, right? Uh, oh, I see. He's surrounded by this darkness, mm -hmm. both literally and metaphorically, you know? Yeah. The shadows are closing in on him, mirroring the pressure he's under, that feeling that he's always just one wrong move away from losing everything. Oh, wow. I hadn't thought about it like that. Yeah. But it makes total sense. Mm -hmm. It's like the city itself is a reflection of what's going on inside him. Exactly. And the reviewers seem to imply that this darkness is actually what makes the show so compelling. Oh, for sure. They even said it's not for the faint of heart. Yeah. Do you think the Penguin might alienate some viewers who prefer a little bit more uh, hope in their superhero spinoffs? Well, that's the gamble, right? This yeah. isn't your typical good versus evil story. The yeah. Penguin is more about, you know, ambition, corruption, and those blurred lines between right and wrong. Mm -hmm. It's asking us to kind of confront that darkness within ourselves, even as we watch it play out on this grand scale in Gotham. So it's less about rooting for the hero and more about understanding the villain. Exactly. It's about peeling back the layers of this really complex character, someone capable of brutality, but also surprising tenderness. Yeah. And in the end, we're left grappling with this question. Can someone like Oswald Cobblepot ever truly find redemption? Oh, wow. Or will he always be pulled back to that darkness that created him? That is a heavy question. It is. And it sounds like uh, we're just getting started. Oh, yeah. If this first episode is any indication, the Penguin is going to be a wild ride. Buckle up. So for those of you who enjoy your superhero stories with a side of moral ambiguity mm -hmm. and a whole lot of darkness. Oh, yeah. HBO's The Penguin is definitely worth adding to your watch list. Definitely. And as always, we want to hear your thoughts. Yes. What resonated with you? What questions are you left with? Let us know. Until next time. Keep exploring, keep questioning, mm -hmm. and keep diving deep. Dive deep, everybody. Mm.